So we are looking at the 1960 constitution that was promulgated by the Osage. For, and we are just telling the story, okay? So this is the 1960 constitution, and we expect that you will learn from it if you haven't seen it before. Okay, when we saw it, we were surprised. But it's the first Republican constitution of Ghana. Okay, so that's uh, Article 8, is it? Yes. There shall be a president of Ghana who shall be the head of state and responsible to the people. That's Article 8 of the Constitution. There shall be a president of Ghana who shall be head of state and responsible to the people. Now, the reason why they had to put head of state there was to indicate clearly that the queen was no longer the head of state of Ghana. Because before this constitution, what you had was a parliamentary constitution where Kwame Nkrumah was the prime minister, head of government, but the queen was the head of state. In that situation, uh, they, they operate what we call in political science a bicephalous executive. Bicephalous executive. So the executive is split into two heads. The head of government, the prime minister, and the head of state. What we have right now, what the Americans have, is a monocephalous executive where the executive is all retained in one person. That person is the head of state, and that person is also the head of government. So in his activities as president, either under the uh, Third Republic, which would be Liman, Fourth Republic, which would be Rawlings, Mills, Kufu, Mahama, and Akufuado, they operate both as head of state and as head of government. As head of government, they are partisan political people, as, as I said before. And so the in, in the equation, the state is the constant, the government is the variable. Government is MPP, government, NDC government, but the state is the same. So the president of Ghana today is head of state. When he is receiving a guest at the airport, another president, he's performing the functions of a head of state. When he is at the military academy commission officers, he's performing the functions of the head of state. When he sits in cabinet, he's performing functions of a head of government. Because the queen does not attend cabinet meetings in England. She's head of state. She doesn't need to attend cabinet meetings. So this is what it was before. Kwame Nkrumah was a prime minister, reported to the queen, who was the head of state of Ghana. The queen continues today to be head of state of countries outside the UK territory. She's head of state of Australia. She's head of state of Canada. She's head of state of New Zealand. Far away places like that. She still sits in England at Buckingham and is head of state over there. So this article was to remind Ghanaians that the head of state, the president of Ghana, is also the head of state and is responsible to the people. Anything more to add before we move on? Oh, you've done everything. <laughs> okay, let's move to the next one. So this article H2, subject to the provisions of the constitution, the executive power of the state is conferred upon the president. That's very interesting. The executive power of states is conferred upon the president. Says, subject to the provisions of this constitution. I think we still have this in the, in the current yes, constitution. Article 58. The combined effect of Article 57 and 58 of the 1992 constitution vests executive power in the president. So it's a similar... And it's subject to the provisions of the of constitution. Cons exactly. So very, very same. Same yes, as this one. Uh, okay. Virtually. Let's move on. Okay. H3 says that the president shall be the commander-in-chief of the armed forces and the fount of honor. I'm not sure whether we still do this fount of honor. But. It's not there expressly. But the courts have held that indeed mm -hmm. the president is a fount of honor in Tufo and Attorney General. At that time, it wasn't even uh, okay. Kwame Nkrumah that okay. the president has a responsibility. He impersonates who the ideal um, Ghanaian should be. Reason he is called, or she, um, if possible, reason he or she is called the first gentleman of the land, or if in, in case of a woman, the first lady of the land. So that's a fount of honor. Yes, thing. it's the basis. Okay. Let me, let me remind the producers to please get the Nkrumah swearing in ready. Nkrumah swearing in, please get it ready. Okay. Uh, so the president of Ghana, that's 8-3. Okay, let's move on. 8-4, uh, except as may be otherwise provided by law, in the exercise of his functions, the president shall act in his own discretion and shall not be obliged to follow advice tendered by any other person. This is one of the interesting ones. That sort of typifies Kwame Nkrumah. Uh, he says that, Except as otherwise provided by the law, in exercise of his function, that's when the president is performing his functions, he shall act in his own discretion and shall not be obliged to follow advice tendered by any other person. That's interesting. Very interesting. This one, we don't have it. We don't have anything like no. that. It's gone. Even um, in lawmaking, in Article 96, mm -hmm. once the president says, once the president rejects a bill, he writes to Parliament, he attaches a memorandum. If Parliament still feels strongly about the bill, Parliament will then write back to the President um, on two-thirds majority votes, and the President will be forced to sign. He has no option, bill, he must yeah. sign. So the limitations to the President that we see in the 1992 Constitution, yes. even that which we think is not enough, were yeah. not available in the Kwame Nkrumah Constitution yes. 1960. If you look at Article 12, to, every, Article 12 um, 1 and 2 of the Constitution, it places the responsibility on everybody, including the President, to respect 
human rights. The current constitution. Yes, yeah. but in this constitution, it wasn't there. Uh, yeah, Ria Kutu was interpreted in Ria Kutu to be an honorary oath the president ought to have taken and was not. Okay, Justice let's, let's move on to the other areas I want people to see. Okay, the power to repeal or alter this article is reserved to the people. Okay, uh, okay so Article 9, term of office. The term of office of the president shall begin with his assumption of office and end with the assumption of office of the person elected as president in the next following election. So, however, that the president may at any time resign his office by instrument under his hand addressed to the chief justice. So this article meant that there was no clear presidential term. Yes, and that he or she, or in this instance, he had the mandate to govern till at a time when he or he cannot anymore. Whether he resigns... Not quite. They said that until the, uh, until the assumption of the office of the person elected as president in the next following, following election. The next following election could have been 100 years. So there was years. no determination of the next election? Yes. They are specific subsequently, yeah. but okay. generally there was no fixed term, as we have the four years, four years now. No. So the term of office of the president shall begin and, and the assumption of his office and end with the assumption of the next, next president. Exactly. Okay. All right. Let's move on. Ten. This one is my favorite one. And this is a point that we have been making for many, many uh, years now that people have not understood. So let's look at Article 10. This is Article 10 of the 1960 Constitution. So it's there in capital. Kwame Nkrumah is hereby appointed first president of Ghana, having been chosen as such before the enactment of the Constitution in a plebiscite conducted in accordance with the principles set out in Article 1 of the Constitution. This is the, this is the crux of the matter. This is what we've been talking about. Kwame this is the 1990 Constitution of Ghana. It has a name of Kwame Nkrumah in Article 10. Kwame Nkrumah is hereby appointed first president of Ghana, having been chosen as such before the enactment of the Constitution in a plebiscite. So my operative words here is the word appointed instead of the word elected. So Kwame Nkrumah was not elected president of Ghana because of the procedure by which he became president. It was a plebiscite. And so the 1992 constitution calls it an appointment, not an election. How does the current constitution call the process by which a president becomes? Do we have a yes? Yes, it's subsequent, but we, okay. we can just brush it. Um, it's called okay. a presidential election. So if you look at Article 63, mm -hmm. um, clause 1, 2, 3, um, through to 7, it expressly states that there has to be a presidential election mm -hmm. and then gives the requirement you have to have 50% of the votes plus one and all of that. So it expressly states that before you become a president, there has to be a presidential election specifically made um, or specifically organized to select or to vote for the person mm -hmm. who would govern the country in the next four years. So that if we are setting up an autobiography about, a biography about Kwame Nkrumah, we know the great things that he's done. I'll show you some of the great things that he did with Ghana's industrialization effort. What's the time now? Let me just check. Okay, some of the great things he did with Ghana's industrialization effort, uh, but we are discussing his relationship with the law. And I think that from now onwards, every birthday of the Osage, if we can have time to have a look at these things, it's important for our country. They do it a lot in America. On Independence Day, they look at the history of their country. So this is in Krumah in the 1960 Constitution. A lot of things he did at that time would have looked good at the time, would have been relevant for his time, and would have been relevant for the protection that he sought for himself in order to achieve his African agenda. But clearly, in law, these were uh, uh, provisions of the Constitution that gave him excessive powers. What do you have?